What's up guys? So, got something new here. Anybody wanna guess what it is? What's up guys? So, exciting day here at Wildfire. As you can see, I am holding a box in my hand and it's not just any box. It is a box that holds a new animal uh, for us here at Wildfire. Now, those of you guys that haven't been following us very long, uh, you might not know that I used to have a big mature black throat monitor named Chrono. Unfortunately, last year Chrono passed away. He was a little over 10 years old and literally just found him one morning and he, he, he'd gone. So um, I actually have something really cool coming with Chrono, but it could be a while till that comes, so I'm not even gonna talk about that right now. However, a buddy of mine recently had some baby black throat monitors and I was kicking the idea around for a while. Um, he was actually gonna keep this one and then hit me up was like, hey, I'm not gonna keep him. I know you're interested, do you want him? And I of course couldn't resist. So here he is. So never done an unboxing video before. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and open this up. This is our new baby black throat monitor. And I already got him out earlier. So that's why he's loose in the box. We don't generally do that, but here you go. <laughs> Here's our new little guy. And he he's got sweet. some pretty sweet markings on his back. So he's super, super tame, super calm, as you can see. I say that now he's probably gonna bite me, but um, you know, he's, uh, he's ready to be out of this box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set his cage up right here, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and tell you guys why I'm doing what I'm doing. So we got layer one in here. Um, there's gonna be a couple different layers to this uh, for two reasons. One, we're gonna make it bioactive. If you don't know what that means, I'll explain it later. Uh, the other reason is because black throat monitors love to dig. And this guy's not that big yet. I don't want him to be able to dig all the way down to the bottom of this. So I'm gonna put a couple different layers in it to prevent him from doing that. He'll still be able to dig, just not all the way to the bottom. So, I've got the rock in there now, guys. Um, put two layers of rock in there, some pebble, as well as some red lava rock. Um, so that's all to help it drain. That's why that's in there. Um, and now what I'm putting in there is a little bit of fiberglass or mesh screen, whatever you want to call it. Um, I cut this to size already, I wanted to save some time, so I already did that. I got two pieces there. I also have this light diffuser. That will be the other thing that goes in there. This is what will stop him from digging to the bottom, right? He could easily dig through the rocks, dig through the screen, but this will stop him from digging to the bottom. Once I put this in, I'm gonna put some dirt and play sand that I already mixed up on top of it, and that will be the base layer to his biv. All right, so got that layer in there now. Now it's time to add the sand. Well, sand and dirt, both. So, like I said, I already mixed this up. It's literally just a bag of, it's not organic, but you don't want to get miracle grow dirt when you do something like this, right? Because that's got all sorts of chemical, not necessarily chemicals, but like plant additives and stuff like that. You don't want that in, in, in your viv with your animals. So, this is just some plain, regular dirt and some play sand mixed together. Bucket stuck. But there we go. So you can see the sand, the dirt, and now we're just gonna mix this in here and layer this on. And I'm gonna add a little bit more actually because this isn't quite enough for him to be digging in. So I want a little bit more depth than that. Um, I don't want it all the way up to the edge, but I want it close. And right now it's we're at about the bottom. So I'm gonna add a little bit more dirt to this and then we're gonna put in the rest of his uh, cage decor and then we get to put him in the cage. All right guys, so you can see, got a nice layer of dirt in there now, a couple of inches, I got a couple of spots I'm gonna fill in there, but for the most part, that's exactly where I want it to be. Um, so it's not just throwing the dirt in here, you gotta pack it down. So these guys are amazing diggers. Um, if you've never had a black throat, then you probably just don't get it, um, but they have massive claws and they will just dig and dig and dig and dig. And so the more you can pack this dirt down, especially at his size, the more tight I can make it, and yeah, I'm breathing heavy because lugging this stuff around. Um, but anyways, the tighter I can pack this down and make it compact, the harder it will be for him to dig it up. Because what we don't want is him to try to dig down or dig through this layer with the light diffuser and everything else. So we're getting there, almost, almost done. Um, 
This is a really simple setup for right now, guys. Uh, literally a log, and that's gonna be one perching spot for him with just his ceramic heat emitter. So if you guys don't know what that is, it looks like this. Um, and it's literally just gonna go right into here. And this will sit on that side. Um, this is his main heating element. So here's the other deal. He, uh, and actually, no, I'm, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna put this over here on top of this little ramp because his under tank heating mat is over there. So that will be the warm side of his cage. Um, so for you, those of you guys who are not familiar with uh, black throat or white throat monitors for that matter, um, they are native to South Africa and they need a super, super warm environment. They need a hot spot of at least 115 to 120 degrees. That's how they digest, which I know sounds crazy. Why would it sit in temperature that hot? Reptiles are, you know, obviously they can't regulate their, uh, their own temperature of their body. You would think that would cook it to death. It doesn't. So anyways, we're going to set that up there. Um, and then we've got the UVB, which is another uh, critical aspect for these guys. And we're going to set that there. So his perch spot with his UVB will be over here. His heat will be over here. Water there. This is, again, a really simple setup. And some people are going to be like, where's his hide? I actually don't want him to have a hide right now. And here's why. As a juvenile, it is really important to socialize and to get these guys to know who you are, right? This lizard is going to grow very, very large and we don't want him to be aggressive or wary of people. So right now, him, and this is also why this tank's coming in here in the house, so he will see us. There's a bathroom right behind me, if you guys can see it, sorry. Anyways, um, but there's a bathroom right here, our pantry's right here, so we're right off our kitchen. Every single day, I'm gonna see this guy in and out of here. He's gonna see human interaction. He's gonna see human movement. He'll get used to it. It will make him a much more, I don't wanna say stable necessarily, but a much more social lizard as he gets older. All right, guys, so got it all set up. We're all done. We're gonna put him in his new home. And again, you can see right there. And again, he was in a bag. We don't ship animals like this, but I already took him out of the bag just to give him a break from being in there. So I'm gonna pick him up. Come here, buddy. All right. Haven't named him yet. What do you guys think we should name him? There we go. We'll ask you guys. I uh, haven't named him yet, but he's super, super pretty. Got some nice spots going on him. Great looking Varanus albigularis. That is the scientific name of a black girl monitor. So here we go. And he's in. So that's going to be his home for a little while, guys. That's uh, where he's going to hang out. That's where we're going to see him every day. We set the tank up, um, and what I was waiting on were some bugs from my buddy Russell. Um, and so he brought me those bugs, and now I'm going to throw these guys in here. Why am I putting bugs in my enclosure? Uh, so these are isopods, and what they are going to do is help keep down the poop and the pee by eating it, digesting it, and putting it back into the soil. That's why we did the layers the way we did. So literally, nothing... Nothing crazy here. We're just gonna take these guys and shake them in here and literally just cover up like that. Dig down a little bit. Take that piece right there, throw it over there. And here's the thing, the, uh, the black throat as his, uh, right now with his size, he can actually eat these guys. So there's no harm in these things. They're actually completely beneficial on all levels um, they'll dig themselves in a bit and they will, uh, they will burrow and make themselves useful. That's what isopods do. So we're just going to do like that and dig a little bit right there, throw it in and my phone's ringing and there we go. So that's kind of about it guys. So we're going to do that. Leave those guys in there. And, uh, yeah, they will help keep the tank clean. You can see our little buddy. He's back there in the corner. He's just curled up and hiding. So, like I said, he might eat some of these guys. Might have to replace them. No big deal. It's easy to do. Have a good one.